So if you've ever been fossil hunting before, you probably will have come across brachiopods, but not that many people know what they are. For a really long time, they were presumed to be like bivalve mollusks, like clams or oysters. However, they are actually an entirely different phylum. The easy way to be able to tell the difference between brachiopods and bivalves, this is a bivalve. You've got two shells, which are the same with a bivalve, and they are not symmetrical down that midline. With a brachiopod, you have two shells that are different, but they are perfectly symmetrical down that midline. There are some differences on the internal anatomy as well, but from the outside, that's the easiest way to tell. So the way in which these animals filter feed is also quite different. So bivalves have a modification of their gill where they filter feed using their gills. Brachiopods have a whole separate structure. So this structure here is known as the loop. And on the loop hangs an organ called the lophophore, which is like a little conveyor belt of tentacles which passes the food along. So in today's oceans, there are around 450 species alive all around the world. Um, in the fossil record, which covers about 500 million years, there are between 12,000 and 30,000 species. Because of their hard shells, brachiopods fossilise very easily. And also, because they are marine invertebrates, you tend to get a lot of them in any population. So they have an extensive fossil record. They were also much more common in the Paleozoic. They have suffered at the hands of many mass extinctions, but they are still alive today. The commonness of brachiopods throughout the fossil record means that they're the perfect organism to look at all sorts of problems from climate change to all sorts of ecological and biodiversity studies. So one thing that we can use brachiopods to look at is how organisms change size across times of stress, uh, like extinction events. This brachiopod is from before a major extinction event. This brachiopod is from after a major extinction event. If we bring them together, you can see that the brachiopod from before the extinction event is significantly larger than that from after the extinction event. This shrinking of animals across extinction boundaries is known as the lilliput effect. When CO2 levels are higher and the ocean is a bit more acidic, it becomes harder for shelly animals to be able to lay down those shells. Nowadays, brachiopods generally range in size from one to nine centimetres, with nine centimetres being really quite rare. In the past, however, Brachiopods could get quite big, like this Gigantoproductus from the Carboniferous. This brachiopod is about 3.7 to 4.4 million years old. It's from the Pliocene period, which is interesting because that's the last time in the Earth's history the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration was above 400 parts per million, which it is today. So we can look at the Pliocene and gain an awful lot of understanding about what might happen in our current climate. By looking at the chemistry of the shell using a technique called sclerochronology, we can gain a proxy for what the sea temperatures were like when the animal was alive and depositing its shell. So brachiopods may be quite small, but they can tell us an awful lot about the geological history of the Earth. And they're actually pretty tasty too. Did you know, all across Asia, these were a delicacy.